going to be for it if it's going to help with our housing crisis, sorry. And I'm also for it from a healthcare perspective in that it may help to allow for a loved one to live independently in the community if it meant that they had a loved one next door to them or in the basement or whatever, however it's going to be set up. Um, but in order to allow this to happen, it may mean that we have to look at our bylaws. So uh, I can speak on local dwellings quite well. Um, 20 years ago, I guess, 10 years ago, I can't remember, 50. Uh, I built a, a granny flat above my garage for my mother in law. She lived in it until she passed away. My son lived in it until he bought a house in Nobel. And I have two tenants right now. Following all the procedures and stuff, um, more revenue, more people. Can't buy any more land, so let's build on what we have. If it's done right, it's worked really well for me, and I'd like to see it continue. Thank you. Apartments above garages <coughs> are a great way to supplement household income make, to make uh, home ownership affordable uh, with a minor streetscape. The bylaws on percentage of lot coverages will com complete, the, uh, complete the way it works. Uh, septics have to accommodate for the environmental protection and I believe monkeys should be occupied by year-round residents as per our bylaws. And as long as those are all followed, I don't have any problems. Thank you. So I think everybody has the same idea across the board. Uh, first of all, dwelling sizes and additional buildings uh, are limited, of course, uh, as we know, to the prospective property uh, sizes and zoning bylaws. Providing the subject buildings are well within current zoning and they are adhering to building code, I really have no issue in providing uh, those type of buildings. And I do agree with uh, uh, what was said here, that it does provide um, extra housing, which is short uh, right now, and it does provide extra income, you know, for long-term rentals. So I think that, uh, yes, it, uh, it, it would be a good idea. Thank you. favor of allowing multiple dwellings on single properties as long as uh, all the neighboring residents have been notified before the permit is issued and uh, obviously all build buildings will be permitted and follow all the codes and then it'll be more tax revenue as well for the township and more revenue for the people maybe don't own the house or like you say somebody's loved one can lift, lift them a little closer. Thank you. So long-term rental units, not short-term, on a property would help them address some of the housing shortage needs that we have in the area. Employees that uh, want to work here have no place to live. Hence, uh, housing is a priority. Uh, rental units, uh, it's, 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 a way to, it's a way to create affordable housing. We should be encouraging this type of um, housing situation. As a matter of fact, in Part, bill, uh, part of Bill 108 of the More Homes, um, More Choice Act, which is part of the Provincial Planning Act, uh, states right in it that uh, municipalities um, allow three housing units per lot. So, you know, this issue is uh, in the spotlight right now. I'm in favor of uh, long-term rentals uh, for multi-units on uh, single-family dwelling properties. Actually, our official plan supports that. Our comprehensive zoning bylaw supports that. And that just falls in line with the provincial policy statement, which tells us we should be doing that. And it's, it's a way of providing accommodation. A lot of what we see, actually, on the way in here tonight, you pass two of them. You may not realize it. So they can be very innocuous if done properly. And if set up, of course, there's going to be considerations for septic systems as well. You're going to have to make sure that 
your septic is sized properly for those extra units. Because our environment, after all, is one of the main reasons we're in Victor Road, is to protect it and keep that safe. So I think it's a good idea. We are supporting it now. I think other than waterfront lots, I believe, do not qualify at this point in time for that. Thank you. I appreciate the less fiery. Though I am not opposed to an argument, I, I might seem timid, I am not. Um, I use my words very carefully, and I mean every word that I say. So, secondary suites, so I'm, I'm in favor. Um, they can provide housing stability for homeowners, for those needing assisted living as well, can be touched on that. It's also a great alternative for those who are looking for an affordable alternative to traditional rental housing. In the same breath, though, I'm mindful uh, that all municipalities face the short-term rent rental issue. McDougall bylaws prevent, sorry, McDougall bylaws currently prohibit rentals of less than 30 days without the property being zoned commercial. And I don't really think that that's something that everybody realizes. I don't think that's communicated very well to our residents right now. I'm in favor of supporting property owners to add a secondary suite to their properties to increase uh, the permanent housing stock in our municipality so long as the bill adheres to the building zoning requirements and rentals are for no less than 30 days. So at this time, McDougal does permit um, things like garages, um, having the space and welcome. Uh, I know for us and our family, um, this is something that, a reality that we've looked at as our children are in their teen years and not that far off from leaving the house, there's not a lot of options, except our house, which is really scary. But, <laughs> but uh, no, it, you know, with the cost of development in the area, the housing crisis is actually just gonna get worse before it starts to get better, before anything, any implementation actually goes anywhere. So um, creative ideas like this are going to be what's gonna help us bridge the gap 